everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make this really fun waterfall card. I have done these before. I've got two others on my channel, but they're from a long time ago. So I've got one that's actually inside the card. That was the first one I done. And then I have another one which is more of a mini album style and there are lots of pages on that one. So I'll share the playlist up here because you might want to look at that one and maybe take some bits from that and, you know, and do it this way. It's up to you. But basically how these work, you just pull down the tab here and then each of the pages flick over revealing a different image on those panels and then you've got this one here at the bottom which says birthdays are all about having it large <laughs> so this is a perfect one for any of those fast food you know burger loving fans that you may have and then inside I've just got happy birthday to you and these are very very easy to make I did make it during the Facebook live I will share that link below because I will show you some of the coloring there and just how I kind of stamped those panels because I have all that ready for this video just to keep it nice and short but like I said the links there if you do want to go and check those out so let me show you how to make it. Okay, so this is the stamp set I used. It's by For The Love Of Stamps and it's Fast Food Fun. When I looked during the Facebook Live, it was still available on Hunky Dory's website and they've currently got a three for two offer on, on their stamp sets. So if you like the, oh no, I think the donut one has run out so I won't rub that one in because I know a lot of people couldn't get the donut stamp set that I shared in the donut card the other day. But uh, yeah, this is the one I've used here. And then for the pull um, little sentiment, I've got this one which was just from the Die Cutting Essentials magazine. It was issue 60. It's a really handy set because it's just got open and pull on it and it's a, uh, and then it's got boy because these kind of cards are great for revealing a surprise. Maybe you're telling someone you're going on holiday or you are revealing if you're having a boy or a girl or something like that. So that's the stamp sets I've used. Then the good old holographic cardstock, I pulled out this one, which is the Dovecraft and it's the A4. But again, that's all optional. That's just how I've decorated, you know, the detail on mine. And then these are the papers that I've used. So it's this gingham print and it's a free download and I will share the link below. And all you have to do is just enter your email address and then you can always unsubscribe after you've downloaded the papers if you don't want to, re you know, receive any more, inf you know, information from them but um, I've just printed a few there I'm going to use the red and the yellow today I've already prepared all of that but they're really nice and you know you can print as few as you want if you just want to print the pink one you can you can just download each color so yeah really really handy and um, perfect for this card Okay, so in the live, I actually had this as two separate pieces. One was six and a half and one was five and a half. And then I thought during the live, I could have just cut it from one piece. But I know maybe some people might have only a five size card stock. So have a look at the, and I'll also write it in my blog, but look at the Facebook live for the two smaller sections. But the full length is the same. So this is 11 and a half inches. So if you are someone that has just 11 inch length card stock, then just check out the Facebook live at the beginning. And also in my blog, I will write down the two lengths but it was five and a half I think and six and a half with the two separate lengths and then you stick them together to get this same piece okay as I've said before I've done all the stamping and everything so just ignore this for the moment but this is a piece of eleven and a half by two and a half and along the eleven and a half inch side you want to score at two and a half three three and a half four four and a half five and five and a half Okay, that's all you need to do, and then if you fold all of the score lines, because those are going to be, this is like now the track where all the panels are going to sit on, so as we pull this piece down, they will all, each one in turn, will just flick over, okay, because this will all be secured together when we get to it. So you want this piece where you've just folded all of those score lines to fold over this piece so it will be slightly longer at the bottom here and that's where I've stamped the pull and I've already decorated. Now you can go ahead and decorate this now if you want. You want to make sure you come down and start your decoration from about an inch down from that last score line there because this doesn't get seen so it's just a waste. You can see those images, just little bits of each image I think looks really nice on that panel. Okay so that's that piece done and then it's just really straight onto the kind of panels because that's the mechanism and the this is what we attach to the front of the card. So here are all of my images. Now some of these I'd already done on the live and then I just colored them once I'd finished. And again, really, really fun. Love this stamp set. I just think it's brilliant. And it's a timeless one as well. So it's something that you can always, you know, pull out year after year. I'm sure someone will enjoy it. So I've got here six 
panels. Now I've done one yellow, one red, one yellow, you don't have to do that, I'm just kind of keeping that theme for this card. But each of these panels are three by three, so you will want six. And then you'll also want six white panels, which are, I think it was, yeah, two and three quarters squared. And they're the ones that I've stamped all my images on. So I've done all of these using Memento Black ink and then my Arteza alcohol markers, the Everblend markers, and just coloured those in. Really quick and easy to colour. Like I said, I do do that in the Facebook Live. But you just want to stick them over all of those so you've got a little border. And then decide what order you want them to go in. Now my Happy Burger Day is going to be the first one that I stick down. And then I'm probably going to do, let's have this one here. And then let's have the drink and the fries, then the splats, and then those ones there. Okay, so that's the order mine's gonna go in, and we're gonna stick them onto here. You will also need another piece of cardstock that's four by one, and that's gonna go across to hold that all in place. And then for the front and the inside, I've got two pieces of holographic cardstock, which are four and three quarters by six and three quarters, two pieces, and then this pattern paper here is four and a half by six and a half. And again, I've already gone and stuck them down because they are now going to go, one's going to go on the front of the card. I'm going to have the red on the front for this one. And then I'm going to stick the yellow on the inside there. Okay, so I'm going to get them stuck down first. Okay, so that's those stuck down. Then we want to move on to this piece. So the first one, all you want to do is open this up and you're going to stick, you're going to attach your glue just that very top one um, half inch section. Okay, so just on that very first one, just there, all right? And then with this one here, you wanna lay it over the top. It's good to use a liquid glue because you've got a little bit of wiggle time. You wanna make sure that you've got an even overhang on both sides there. Once you've got this first one down, you'll use this then to line up all the others. So you don't need to do this with every one, but certainly with the first one, just make sure you get it nice and centered there. And then you can just fold that over, okay? You can see there how it's just attached, just in that first section. Then fold that one over, you wanna add glue to this one. Now do try and make sure you keep your glue within that half inch section. If you would rather use double-sided tape, you can. And then I'm gonna grab my next image, and then again, I'm gonna stick this one over here, but now I just need to make sure it lines up with this one here. So I'm just pushing my finger to each side there, just to make sure that it all sits in place like so, and then again, I can just fold that one over. And then again, grab your next image. Oh, I just realized I need to make sure I'm doing the right colors in order, so I need to have the yellow, actually. So I'll do that yellow one and then the splats. Um, there was a reason why I chose the two separate colors, so some of you might have already <laughs> thought that when I just put them in order that the colours weren't in the right order so good job I noticed so yeah I want to have mine so it's yellow red yellow red yellow red but, and then again just fold that one over on the next one and just repeat that until you stuck them all down Okay, so now you should have something like that. And like I said, if you go ahead, you can do it now as well, because you can still easily put that in your stamping platform, stamp and color on this, because you know that doesn't really affect it. But you wanna, if you have, put like pull there, you can even write it. And um, yeah, this is the whole mechanism. So what's gonna happen now is with this piece, you wanna stick it on this piece here. And you wanna make sure that you've got an even amount overhanging. Okay, so I would add glue, you know, about, one inch up on this section here, like so, and then I can just stick that ooh, over the top there. I'm just going to turn it over just so I can make sure, grab my ruler there, so it's three quarters, three quarters, just a little bit that way. There we go. You can always trim a little bit off of one side if not, but now see there how that overhangs. See I think I've got a little bit more on this side. Let me just check my measurements there. I may need to trim it. Yes yeah, so that's bang on. That's a little smidge. It's like the tiniest amount. So I'm just going to take a little slither. There we go. There you go. Bang on. Okay so that's what you want to have there and then all you're going to do now is turn it over is add glue just to these bits here. 
you know, again, red tape will be okay. And if you're using a liquid glue, can you see there? Make sure you don't go right up to this paper because when you, you know, kind of like squash it down, you don't want the glue oozing out and going in, inside this mechanism. Now hover it on your card. I'm going to use this kind of line here above the white squares is where I'm going to stick this down. And then I'm going to make sure I've got it even overhang here. And then the rest should just all fall into place like so. So it's all contained within there and then you can just slide that, just push your finger on it and you can see there, and because this is a nice strong cardstock, this is a 300 GSM, so it has, you know, that nice kind of movement and it's got the strength to be able to push that all back up again. So it should run very, very freely. And this is the simplest, easiest way to make these cards. And then I've got these tiny little stars, which I found, which are old stamping up ones. These are the last two left, so I used them on that other card. And I just think the stars go really well with this diner inspired card. And all I've got to do is stamp the inside, which was using a My Favourite Things stamp set. Again, I will link it, but I'll do that off camera because um, you, know, you know what to do there. I'll give you the measurements for the mat. But that is the card finished. Just bring in the other one there. And again, I'll just tell you the mat size for this white piece here. It was three and three quarters by five and a half. So I've got room there and I'll just redo that for this one. But again, let me just bring them up. They are very, very easy to make. They look so complex and so hard to do, but they really aren't. And you can take as long as you want with these. You know, you may have pre kind of printed images. Lots of people use photographs on them as well. So it's a really nice kind of keepsake. You know, you might want to show, it could be for someone's sixth birthday and you have six photos on there, one for each year or, you know, there's just loads and loads of ways to do it. But again, if I just pull that one down, can see there all those fun fast food images which always make me hungry so there you have it I hope you've enjoyed this updated waterfall card from me as I said check out the links there as well just for those other ones because there are a bit more there's a lot more pages and just the other one is basically putting that mechanism inside the card so there's that option as well and they do stand up so again, just in case you're wondering, they will stand. So thank you for watching. And as always, please consider subscribing if you haven't already, so you get to see more fun tutorials. Please hit that like button, it's very much appreciated. And I'll be back very soon with another video. See you then, bye.